Great afternoon. We say we're on an intention, of course. So we are back in the Word with a whole lot of other stuff happening. But we want to get back in here and talk about the Passover and the significance of it that God himself has established it as a new year. A new year. Not dealing with the rising of the sun and not talking about... The, 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 this new year is talking about harvest. And it uh, we can see from the scriptures that God told him from the time of this Passover, it is to mark the first uh, month of the year and what uh, they are to do. So we're not talking, God is not come talking about corn and wheat and, you know, like the harvest you do when you have certain things. But this is a spiritual year that God is beginning to um, bring forth. And it's talking about um, the the purpose of bringing souls in, which we know God in, uh, says in the word that Jesus is the Lord of the harvest. So it's beginning to show us in the spiritual realm what is needed to bring forth these souls and to um, uh, like a seed is planted and then the seed is in the ground and then some is watering it or well, some people plant it. And then some water it, and then God give the increase. So God is really marking the beginning of the uh, year of the Lord and the year of the harvest, all pertaining to Christ. Okay, that's why we have this here. So we're going to briefly go back and cover some things. And it, it's significant, thank you Jesus, because it's a spiritual uh, calendar. Thank you, Jesus. It, it is the spiritual calendar of God marking and ha having Moses um, take note of this particular event, this particular um, Passover. It is the beginning, okay? And that's why it's important. When God says to something like he told Moses, as we're going to see, he's telling him to mark and significantly to remember and to follow the Passover uh, guidelines specifically, in which we're going to go over that uh, quickly. We're going to pray. Okay. Father, we thank and praise you. Help us to, to enter into your rest. Thank you for the uh, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened. We will know the hope of your calling, the riches of your inheritance in the saints when you raise up Christ from the dead, now quickening us. We pray this word would fall on good ground. Take root in the very depths of our conscience, our imagination, our memory. God, that your word will saturate our very being. Thank and praise you for this word. We pray, hallelujah, that you will continue to speak to us and through us as we yield to you, our body, soul, and spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're going back to Exodus. And we significantly talk about the, the, the um, three days of darkness, okay? We're going to go back to the ninth chapter. I marked some things. I went to uh, <laughs> do some little, little work. Because my, my washing machine can't hold my big uh, comforter. So I had to go to the laundromat. So I went out there and did that. So Exodus, the ninth chapter, verses 14, I want to highlight. And it says, um, when we said before that God had raised up. For I will at this time send all my plagues upon thine heart. So God is talking um Tell him Moses to tell Pharaoh. And God is clearly in those verses we saw that God said he raised Pharaoh up to show his power and his name may be declared throughout. Okay, so God is working and doing this. And then I went to um, the 11th chapter, verses 1 through 3. And the Lord said unto Moses, Yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterwards, he will let you go hence when he shall let you go you shall surely thrust um he shall surely thrust you out hence altogether speak now in the ears of the people and let every man borrow of his neighbor every woman of her neighbor jewels of silver and of gold okay and it says that god put it in their heart to give them this so so god is thank you jesus uh moving in hearts and minds even though we, we don't see, but God does, um, you know, he says the heart of the king. Sometimes I think we think that God is like way up there and had nothing to do with my brain and nothing to do with my heart. But he does. You can see in these things here, he spoke to these Egyptians to give their jewels of silver and gold to the children of Israel. Okay. Uh, and because he said at midnight going on down, he said that he was coming through 
um, verses um, um, 6. It says, And Moses said, Thus unto the Lord about midnight, I will go out unto the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon the throne, even unto the firstborn of the maid servant that is behind the mill, and all the firstborn of the beast. There shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, but uh, against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue. Now, God is showing man how he dealing with us, our thoughts, our uh, hearts, our imaginations. See, he made us, but some way along the line, we kind of... Um, <laughs> We kind of like forget that he's he really made us. I think sometimes we even got so caught up that we we don't think we was made. We don't think that he fashioned us and he he knows our mouth like he told Moses. I I made the mouth. Sometime somewhere along the line, when the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was eaten, there came a, a, a awareness of uh, uh, like the serpent says, "You will be as gods." So now this here um. Uber men or this attitude of uh, being like gods is 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 kind of overshadowed the thinking of human uh, man. You know, like they they really think they are gods. Okay, and you can see throughout the emperors and throughout the history, they, they rise up even though they have on flesh, they have on flesh. You know, it's just the ego. Okay, it's this ego just out there. Okay, so now we um we're going to go to the reason we are taking our time with this is because. The new year that God tells Moses, this is going to be a new year. Um, the 12th chapter, verses 1 and go down. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. So this is not going to be like regular calendar. This event of this Passover, this event of of um, the firstborn uh, being offered up to God. Thank you, Jesus. All of them that's being offered up to God. Because it says the beast, everything is, God is going to take all of them. He's going to take them all, okay? And he's sparing those in Israel, okay? Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers and the lamb of, of a house. And it says the house be too small. In other words, you have to consume this animal that is going to be sacrificed. You have to consume it all. You can't just say, like some people say, I'm eating and picking over. No, this is not the kind of uh, a lamb or uh, the, the uh, this, this uh, offering where you can say, you know, you know how people are picky when they eat it. They're just too cute. You know, they just, you know. But God said, you're going to eat everything, all of this. All of this animal. And if the, if the animal is too big for your house, you better join in with somebody else. Because none of this is supposed to be left. It's to be consumed. It's, it's to be taken in. It is to be eaten. And then how are you going to take it in? He says, okay. This is how we're going to take it in. He said, they shall eat the flesh in the night um, with uh, unleavened bread, okay, and bitter herbs. This is how you, so when you, this, when I institute this here, you're going to kill the lamb, which the priest is going to kill them, and he's going to kill them, and then they are going to give the meat to the family, and they are to, uh, he tells them, eat with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste, for it is the Lord's prayer. So this is not just like people, you know, they're going to lay around, I'm having a big feast. Oh, I'm so full. It ain't that kind of food. It ain't, it's, not, it's not to satisfy your flesh. God is doing a spiritual thing. Okay? And it, as we continue on, you're going to see it, it, it goes all the way down to the communion table. When Jesus said, except you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you have no part with me. Because this is what it is here. The first time he said, they are to uh, gird up their loins. Not being all slack. You know how people just, I can just go any kind of way? No. The shoes on their feet and the staff in their hand, and they shall eat it in haste. And they shall eat it that night. Okay? And it says, and they shall keep the, the feast of for seven days. 
the house is to be clean of no leaven. The bread is to have no leaven. And leaven represents sin. God is saying that you is represent sin. As we saw when Moses put his hand in the bosom and came out leprosy. We, said, we know that God is now moving in the realm and including the children of Israel into his plan with the lamb without spot of a first year. It's a young lamb, okay? And it's a male, and it's also it could be a goat, but it has to be a male, okay? Thank you, Jesus. It has to be a male. And because this is all foreshadowing and pointing to Christ, this new year, which it says in um, the new year, it happens around April or May. It's connected with the early spring. It's Nisan, um, a spiritual, and it connects with Rosh Hashanah. Thank you, Jesus. So as we go on, we're going to see when we move from Exodus into Leviticus into those books, we're going to see how God unfolds it. But it's significant to know that God himself is starting a new year. Like we get ready to set, celebrate a new year, you know, 2024. But this is a spiritual year. Thank you, Jesus. It is not marked by specifically, uh, you know, 2024. It's marked by God and the the, the lamb and him passing through Egypt, Egypt representing the world. And it clearly tells them those who house that does not have the blood on it. In fact, he tells them uh, when he passed through, when he see the blood of the lamb, he going to pass over that house. Okay. So this is in the spiritual realm. And if you can see that God talking about in the spiritual realm, dealing with sin, because that's what the leaven, uh, unleavened bread means, don't have no sin, cleanse your house, um, uh, feast on the lamb itself, eat all the lamb, but not with an attitude like, you know, we having a big uh, a dinner and, you know, just throwing it around and you're picking it. No, no. Eat it with haste. Eat it with the attitude, hallelujah, that not one, and if any part left the next day is to be burned, okay? Uh, with bitter herb, this is the 12th chapter, they shall eat the flesh, in the night, roasted with fire, and if she told my fire, because remember the tr the Lamb of God is this particular Lamb that they pick for their house has to be roasted, not boiled in water, uh, but it has to be roasted in fire. All this is leading to Christ descending into hell. Thank you, Jesus. All this is moving our consciousness, our memory, our uh, imaginations into the realm to understand God is doing something. And this year, this uh, incident in Egypt marked the first year. And on the 10th day, they are to take the lamb out from, they got the lamb. Okay, so it wasn't like, you know, you tell me now, we're just doing it. No. So they, God told them to go, told Moses, tell the people to, to choose the lamb out without, so the people had to pick the lamb out. They had to go and pick out the lamb, and then they had to bring the lamb to them, making sure it didn't have no blemish on it. And then they had to keep it, uh, to get it on the 10th day. And then they kept it to uh, four more days. And then they killed it. Okay? And they had to, uh, all the congregation was involved in killing. So the, the Egyptians must have seen, well, what are those uh, Israelites doing? They're getting this lamb, and here they are, and they, they're killing the lamb, and they get... But they don't realize the night that they killed that lamb, the night that they killed it and was in their houses and smeared that blood. You know, the Egyptians was wondering, what is these people doing? Like the time of Moses, what is he doing? <laughs> and people have a tendency to say, what are you doing? You are down here and you fasting and praying. What are you doing? Because they don't understand it because it's spiritual. Okay. So they didn't understand that God was implementing a spiritual uh, incident in the spiritual realm. And the blood of the animals was going to uh, prepare the children of Israel, first of all, for the death angel not to come into their houses. And then every time they would do the, um, the Passover lamb, it gave, made them through the blood of the lamb to, so that God would be able to, they could be able to approach God through Aaron, who was the priest. Okay. God was opening up a way in the spiritual realm because he clearly said, that the, the day that Adam ate, he shall surely die. So now we know once man was pronounced in a state of death, then we have to have a remission of sin, which is the shedding of blood, which we're going to continue on to see that God is now making a way, and it's not fully open. It's not fully done. 
but it's enough for them to hear from the vessels that God is speaking to. And each one of them was required to have the blood or have the lamb for their house. And with the attitude of, is, and he even told uh, Moses, um, he says, um, I want to see what he was telling Moses. Uh, um, seven days they shall eat unleavened bread. Seven days they shall eat. And um, they eat it with their lawns girded and eat it in haste. Okay. Um, I want to go back to, um, it says, uh, it is a night to be much observed unto the Lord. This is the 12th chapter, verses 42. Okay. Um, and it says, it is a night to be much, and I don't know why the Lord did it at night, because he, he, he said clearly, it's going to be midnight. Midnight. And see, so we're going to keep looking for the word midnight because we know fast forward, all of us who have studied the New Testament, some things begin to happen at midnight. Okay. So now we see here, it says, it is a night to be much observed unto the Lord. And this, it is observed unto the Lord. It's not like I'm just sitting down eating a big old, you know, roast and stuff. No, it's, it's a, it's an act of eating unto the Lord. To, uh, um, unto, uh, it, um, it is a night to be much observed unto the Lord for bringing them out of the land of Egypt. This is that night, the Lord, to be observed of all the children of Israel in their generation. For generations it is to be observed. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, This is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof. So, this is a, what you call a consecrated or a, a, a sacrifice. And the stranger that don't know God cannot eat it. But every man's servant that is bought for money, when thou hast um, circumcised him, then shall he eat. Okay? So, this, in order to take part, the circumcision was the covenant he made with Abraham. Every male on the eighth day had to be circumcised. This eating is not fleshly. It is a spiritual uh, act. And we're going to see as we come down to the, the, uh, our communion table. Anyone who is not circumcised and this time is circumcised in your heart. Thank you, Jesus. Then shall he eat. The, a foreigner or a hired servant shall not eat thereof. In one house shall be shall it be eaten, and thou shalt not carry forth aught of the flesh abroad out of the house. In other words, it's not time to go say, oh, send it something to my neighbor. Say, this is not, it's not a picnic, okay? This is not one of them things where you're having a picnic. We had a big picnic. Oh, yeah, we got to kill the lamb. You want some up? No, it's not. It's nothing like that. You can't share this with outside of your house, okay? Think of this. This is the Exodus the 12th chapter, verse 42 down. And one house shall it be eaten, and thou shalt not carry forth aught of the flesh abroad out of the house, neither shall ye break a bone. Don't break the lamb's bone. Okay? So you got to be kept. This is all pointing to Christ. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. And when a stranger shall go, uh, 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 when a stranger shall so sojourn with thee and will keep the Passover of the Lord. Let all his males be circumcised. Then let him come near and keep it and he shall be as one that is born in the land for no uncircumcised person shall eat. No uncircumcised. Now we know as we who are in the Gentile, the circumcision now is in the heart. And no uncircumcised person, no uncircumcised. That's why the scripture said, "You he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation. Because God said, no uncircumcised. That's out of Exodus, okay? So we're going to, um, it's significant to remember that this Passover, which we're going to keep relating it to our attitude and our memory. First of all, it's clear that it is a night to be observed unto the Lord. Every time you take communion, it's unto the Lord. Every time you take it, it's to remember the Lord. This you do in remembrance of me. Thank you, Jesus. And no uncircumcised foreigner 
And it's not something you just spread like that. Oh, like they said, the communion. Um, oh, we just said, give me some of that wafer. I'm hungry. It's not for that. Okay? It's not that. Um, one law shall be to him that is homeborn and to the stranger that sojourn among you. Thus did all the children of Israel. So one law is to him that is a homeborn and one that is a stranger that's been circumcised. There ain't going to make no difference between you. You got the same law and the same requirements to do as unto the Lord. But the key thing now is to remember it is a new year. It is a new year and Nisan and tying it in with Rosh Hashanah and it's the early spring where the Passover lamb is killed. Okay? That's what we're going to stay. Uh, as we continue on, it's going to develop. Okay? <laughs> but I had to get back over here and talk to you about that. And and the key thing is uh, it's not a, it's not a, like people say, well, you know, give me a little bit of that communion thing. It, it's not, listen, you're in trouble because it's not something you just, you spread around like, you know, it's food. It is unto God and it's in, it is, uh, the lamb of God, which God has setting this up in a spiritual realm. That's why he said, um, don't do it on, a lot of times we, we just pass it through in the church, you know. And, and we have issues, and we just take it for granted. But this, this is clear. That way to say, Lord, forgive me. You know, if, forgive me if I'm in error. Help me not to take the communion. Because it clearly says, a uh, stranger, in other words, God is consecrating when you pray over the communion. It's about because it is relating to Christ. So this is important for us, that this is a new year. And it is a spiritual year, and it is instituted or uh, brought forth through the blood of the Lamb and the firstborn of Egypt, as they coming up to God as an offering. All the firstborn. And he said, I'm taking all the firstborn. This is how I'm going to let you know that this, this Passover is for me, because God has taken them souls. Thank you. He said, he's going to take all them souls in Egypt. Because remember, all souls belong to God. He's taking them souls. Souls. But he's sparing the children of Israel and giving them the Lamb of God, giving them the rules and, and, and instructions of how to prepare themselves during the time when he passed through Egypt and get all the animals, everybody, the male, rich and poor. I'm taking all the firstborn. God said, I'm taking them. And we're going to see as God going on how he continues to say, I want the firstborn. I, I want the one that opened the matrix. This is God. Now, you're talking about the one that's sovereign. And the one that uh, don't have to explain himself to us, okay? That's what he said. So, but the key thing, it is a new year. It is a spiritual year. And every time, as we're going to see, he says, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show forth my death. So, it's God. We want our conscience and our thoughts to get in um, in the right uh, idea of the communion. It's not food. It's not just a ritual. It's just something we get doing. Read the 12th chapter, okay? I'm going to mark these things. With this, we got the 12th chapter, verse 42, talking about clearly. There's a lot more in here, okay? Round to 48. And it is a new year. It is a new year, and it's not a calendar year. It is a spiritual time. It is a spiritual day. Like you say, the day of the Lord. Um, you know, the day when you're born again. The, it is a spiritual thing, and it's, God is implementing this with Egypt. Now, it's significant because he didn't outline Egypt and said, I raised you up for this reason, to show my power, okay, and, and his name to go forth. And, and I want to show you, um, I have this book, and these books is called The Panoramic, it comes in four sets, and this begins to show us, I'm going to show you First, you see um, 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 Sham, Ham, and Jephthah, and in the time of Noah, okay? And then you have the Tower of Babel. And then when you go, you see, too, that we're moving now where he went from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Name was changed to Israel. And this here shows you, which we know he from Jacob, um, he went to Joseph to bring them down into Egypt. But this book shows you a little bit about Judah. But there are, these books, I think you can still buy them. I hope I don't have it upside down. <laughs> but these books, I think, will help give you a visual 
of what's going on and talking about all the souls. And these souls that we see here at the top, you see these souls, they came from Sham, Ham, and Jethan, and showing you how, how the multitude of, of people, Assyria, uh, uh, um, Europe, it shows you where these souls went to. And then it turns and shows you too that they um, begin to go around and God began to pull out Abraham, Isaac, and go on. And this book has a lot more. So as we continue to go through, um, I will use these books to just give a little idea of what is going on and help us, okay? Right now we're focusing on the fact that this is a new year and it's, uh, re, uh, it's the spring, early spring, and because it's going to tie into the harvest, the harvest time. That's what God is about, harvest. He's getting rid of the harvest, the great harvesting of the soul. He done, get the, he done got the first ones already. He's going to get them. There. And see, we talking about the ones who are new life, but all, all the souls belong to God. So even the Egyptians, I mean, God took them as a sacrifice. In fact, you can see in the scripture, he said, I, I gave so-and-so as a sacrifice. God is sovereign. And, but he has given us a chance to be born of his spirit and accept the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. And that's the blessing we have, that our sins will be. But I thought about, too, Christ himself has the, uh, well, we're going a little ahead, but we'll see that Christ has the, the option of seeing who we are because Jesus said that you are my disciples if you do whatsoever I say. So the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of Christ, you know that, right? You can, that's in the Scripture too. He is God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are one in the plan and redemption. So this starting of this new year is the year starting the year of the Lord. Think of leading up to the year of the Lord, leading up to the time of the redemption of all of creation. God has is, is begun. It's a new day. Okay, and that's why we want to remember now and the fact that the way you eat this uh, lamb, not with an attitude like it's a barbecue, not that kind of attitude. Okay, an attitude uh, is unto the Lord. Okay, uh, it must be uh, observed unto the Lord. Every time we eat the, uh, the Passover lamb, it is to be observed unto the Lord. That's the 42nd uh, verse of Exodus 12. There's a lot in 12, and I'll pick out some more. But I wanted to get on here. I've been running around all day, and I wanted to um, encourage you. It was a song I wanted to sing. <laughs> I wanted to sing a song. These songs encourage me. Um, uh, when it says, um, he's an on time God. Oh, yes, he is. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. May not come when you want him, but he'll be there right on time. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. And God is on time for the children of Israel because he done prophesied. He said, out of 400 years, I'm coming down there and deal with him. And God is right on time according to his prophetic word. And that's what we got to be mindful of. God is on time. And we can't be out of step with God. <laughs> we have to get into the, we have to understand what's prophesied. Okay, and that's the reason we're in the Word. And, and we're praying for God to give us grace and mercy as we go into the Word, that the Word will take root in us. And through the Word, we will be transformed and our minds be renewed. We can't take God for granted. It's just the nature of man just to just, you know, go um, just, ah, God, you know, it's, it's okay. You know, anything. We're going to see sometimes the offering that we give. He like, this, I don't like this attitude. And God, believe me. I'm telling you, you can say you can have an attitude if you want, but God is, is you're going to see the serious God, okay? He's serious about, and he clearly said, um, when a stranger shall go and sojourn with thee and will keep the Passover of the Lord, let all the males be circumcised. You just come in here and see the circumcision now I'm telling is of the heart. Of the heart. And only God can circumcise your heart. You think God is playing. That's why a lot of talk about people being left for the tribulation because <laughs> there got to be some circumcision doing in the heart. Lord, help us, Jesus. Let's close out. Father, we thank and praise you. If you know us better than we know ourselves. 
Help us not to deceive ourselves. The Bible said deceiving and deceiving out. Help us not to deceive ourselves. Help us to walk in the light of your word and that the word will take down root in the very depths of our souls. We pray and thank you for your mercies and your grace toward us. Hallelujah. Thank you and praise you, Lord. Help us, O oh God, to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying into the church. If we're getting puffed up or pride or getting outside of ourselves, we ask you to have mercy upon us and lead us in a plain path. Help us to go in the straight and the narrow, Lord God. For there's a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof is the way of death. Help us, God, to stay on the straight and narrow as we yield to you our body, soul, and spirit. It's in Jesus' name we pray and count it done. Amen. It's not Salvation is not something we may be playing around with it, but it is serious. Okay, and I'm telling you, I'm praying. I'm praying for you. You praying for me. And we praying for each other. Lord have mercy. And it says it's um, not deceiving themselves. We don't want to see deceive ourselves. God understands. After He didn't saw His Son suffer, He understands what. Did you better repent? And I better repent. <laughs> After we didn't saw, you have a child, and you see your side suffer for someone else, and to fulfill you, and, and obedient son, obedient it says even to the death of the cross, and this is the Lamb. Christ is the Lamb. That's how we're gonna see Christ in this book. Thank you, Jesus. So please push the like button, and I pray if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today is the day of salvation. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God sent not in his, his son in the world to condemn the world, but the world through Christ might be saved. And that's what God wants us all to be saved. And that means when we hear the gospel and we believe it and take it into our heart and ask God to come into our life, hallelujah, and confess with our mouth and believe in our heart, God will save our souls. I pray that you have um, been blessed by this YouTube channel. Please continue on. Hallelujah. And uh, I got some more songs I want to sing because all day long I'm going to be thinking about songs. The one that's talking about, We are more than a conqueror through him that love me. We're more than a conqueror. More than a conqueror through him that love me. I am what God says I am. I am what God says I am. Hallelujah. I'm more than a conqueror. More than a conqueror through him that loved me. All these little songs popping by here. Hallelujah. And so please continue to pray as we continue to press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Christ. Yes, he walked the earth as a man, but he is now spirit. And we enter into him by the Holy Spirit. That's how we receive in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We are baptized into Christ. Thank you, Jesus. He's no longer walking around as a man. He is now fully, hallelujah, in the Spirit. And we too are on these uh, 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 vessels. But we are our spirit too. And our spirit can connect with his spirit and become one. So I pray that you are being motivated and encouraged. To get in the Bible and let the Bible get into you. Push the like button and encourage someone else to come along. In Jesus' name, amen.